first, it's true that crossovers are segments growing everywhere, all, uh, all markets. We see it in Europe, we see it in the United States, we see it in China. Like everything which is growing and which is a new concept, usually your profitability is much better on this segment than on classical segments. So uh, the development of crossover is good news for the industry because it allows to present products which are fresh. So, you know, car makers are going to have to have a good balance between bringing crossover and at the same time, these crossover are eating into more classical products. An excellent example is about the uh, introduction of Scenic. Scenic is an MPV in the C segment. In the C segment, crossover are developing a lot. So you have from one side Kaja, but at the same time, uh, Renault position in Scenic is very important. So you're going to have to have the two bodies continue to attract in the same segment different people, try to identify why people should buy Scenic compared to people buying Kaja. So a lot of car manufacturers are going to have to be much more precise in terms of product planning and marketing to make sure that they can hold into their existing position and at the same time participating to the, to, to the conquest. But overall, crossover development is good news for the industry. One of the reasons for which we're going in Formula One today is we are, for the next five to six years, going through a very important push in emerging market. We're starting a plant in China, starting from zero. Uh, we have established a base in India, but we are still very small in India. The success of the quid is a very good omen, but there are more cars coming. Uh, we have a heavy strategy in South America. Okay, we are in Iran, and the Iranian market is going to de uh, uh, develop now that the sanctions have been uh, removed. So uh, in Russia also, that means uh, Renault needs to boost its awareness in emerging markets. First, um, we said very clearly that what we want is to reach uh, what I call a milestone, which is important for us, 100,000 electric cars a year. That's, that's what we are aiming, as an alliance. Between uh, the LEAF of Nissan, Zoe of Renault, NV200, uh, the Kongu Electric, uh, plus all the cars that we are preparing, that's what we are aiming at. We're not there yet, per, per year. You know, we're not very far, but we're not there. I think it's feasible, particularly with the development of the battery. That means the autonomy is going up, which means more and more people are deciding to move to electric cars. Development of the charging infrastructure, which is a second obstacle. Some countries are doing a great job, like Japan doing a great job. France in some cities, etc., is doing a great job into developing uh, a charging in United States, some areas, but we have still a long, uh, a long, a long way uh, to go. Autonomous, uh, autonomous drive, this is coming. Uh, we, we, we know that. Everybody's working on it. Uh, we have defined the different steps. First steps, Autonomous drive on a highway, one lane, or autonomous drive in a traffic jam, one lane, which is the easiest part. This is coming 2016, 2017. Then you're going to have multi-lane uh, autonomous drive, which is mainly on a highway where the car is going to be able to change lane independently of what you are doing. And this is 2018, 2019. And then the ultimate one, which is city driving. Uh, which is more around 2020. Now, as you know, autonomous car has another aspect, which is connected car. Because if you have an autonomous car and you have no connectivity, it's worthless. So if you are in autonomous mode, there is something you can do which is more productive or more... Uh, well, I see all of this in 2020. <laughs>